Welcome back, everybody, for another deep dive. Today, we are going to be um, tackling something that feels like it's everywhere these days. We're talking about Python, and it seems like you are all just as curious as we are about it. We've gotten a ton of questions, articles. You even sent us a whole YouTube video about it. So, uh, yeah, why is everyone suddenly talking about Python? It's a great question. And I think the, the first thing to emphasize is this isn't just like some, you know, tech world fad. It's not just buzz. There are very real reasons why Python is experiencing this surge in popularity. OK, so the YouTube video that we got actually called Python multipurpose, which, to be honest, when I hear that, I think buzzword. Yeah. So does that mean it really can do like a zillion things or is that a bit of an exaggeration? It's it's closer to the truth than you might think. What's so fascinating about Python is that it really can be used for this incredible range of tasks, from very simple to incredibly complex. We're talking you know, data analysis that scientists are doing. We're talking web development. We're even talking about just automating those really tedious little tasks that we all have in our lives. So it's not just for like, hardcore programmers who, you know, dream in code. Because I have to admit, when I hear Python, I immediately picture, like, someone in a dark room hunched over lines of glowing green text. Yeah, and that's a very common misconception. And that YouTube video did a really good job, actually, of highlighting how diverse the Python community has become. It's not just these, you know, hardcore programmers. You have accountants using Python to automate their financial reports. You've got artists using it to create generative art. Kids are using Python to build simple games. It's a lot more approachable than its reputation might suggest. Okay, so we're talking less the matrix and more, I don't know, really well-stocked toolbox that, like, anyone can learn to use. I like that analogy, yeah. It's about, you know, it gives you the tools and the flexibility to build solutions, whether you're a complete beginner or a seasoned programmer. Speaking of tools, one of the things that makes Python so appealing is how efficient it is. Yeah, the YouTube video touched on that a little bit. They gave this example of like extracting letters from the phrase, hello world. And apparently Python's con was way shorter than a lot of other languages. Absolutely. Python is known for having this very clean, readable syntax, which basically means that you can accomplish the same task in fewer lines of code compared to other languages. So mm. not only does this save time, but it also really reduces the likelihood of errors. So less code, less time, and fewer errors. Sound like a win-win-win to me. <laughs> but um, if Python has been around for a while now, the video mentioned over 20 years, right? Mm. Why is it suddenly having like this massive moment? What's changed? It's a great question. And it's really like a perfect storm of several different factors coming together. So. For one, we're living in this age of what people call big data, right? Organizations across every industry are collecting these mountains of information, and they're looking for ways to make sense of it all. Okay. To analyze it, to extract insights from it, and Python happens to be exceptionally good at that. So Python is up to the task, you're saying? It's incredibly good at handling and making sense of large data sets, which is a big part of why it's become so beloved in the data science world. But it's not just data science, right? We're also seeing this like massive push for automation across pretty much every industry. Companies and individuals are realizing that they can save so much time, they can reduce errors, and they can just boost their productivity by automating a lot of these repetitive tasks. And this is where Python comes in again, right? Exactly. Yeah. Because Python, again, is so versatile and it has that relatively easy learning curve, it makes it a perfect tool for automating a whole range of processes. And we can talk about the specifics a little later, but we're talking anything from something as simple as like, you know, organizing files on your computer to something as complex as like scraping data from websites or even, you know, controlling smart home devices. So it's like having this tireless digital assistant that lives inside your computer and just never gets tired of doing all the boring stuff for you. I can definitely get on board with that. But the YouTube video also mentioned something about Python being used for web development, which I have to admit kind of surprised me. I always thought you needed to know, like HTML, JavaScript, those sorts of things, to build websites. You're absolutely right. Those languages are essential for the front end of a website. That's the part that users actually see and interact with. But behind the scenes, Python plays this really crucial role in powering the logic and the functionality of web applications. So these really powerful Python frameworks, Django is a great example, that make it significantly easier to build really complex websites and web apps. Frameworks, those are like those pre-built blocks of code that the video mentions. So it's like you're getting a head start instead of having to build everything totally from scratch. Exactly. Imagine you're like building a house, right? 
Think of frameworks as kind of like the prefabricated walls and floors. You can still customize, you can still design the house the way you want, but you don't have to like reinvent the wheel every time. That makes a lot of sense. So to bring this back to our listeners, we're talking about the possibility of like using Python to build anything from like a simple personal website to a more complex web application. Absolutely. And even if you're not quite at the point where you're ready to like build a website from scratch, there are still ways that Python can actually enhance just your everyday web browsing experience. You can use it to build like browser extensions that do things like, you know, block ads for you, automate online tasks. You can even use them to kind of personalize the content that you see on your favorite websites. Wow. It sounds like Python is practically running the internet behind the scenes. Like everything from the recommendations we see on streaming services to the products we might be like persuaded to buy when we're shopping online, Python is somehow involved. Oh, it is. It really has become this ubiquitous language that's powering a vast range of applications that we use and interact with every single day. And as technology keeps evolving at this you know, breakneck speed, Python's ability to adapt and to integrate with all these new tools really ensure that it's going to remain incredibly relevant for many years to come. Okay, so We've talked about data crunching, automation. We've even touched a bit on web development. It sounds almost too good to be true. Are there any downsides to Python? Are there any like limitations that we should be aware of? Like, are there any situations where it might not be the best tool for the job? It's a crucial question to ask because like any tool, Python does have its limitations. It's not a magic bullet for absolutely everything. And I think one thing that often comes up is the question of speed. A speed, you mean it's slow? Well, slow might be exaggerating it a little bit, but compared to some other languages, especially languages like C++ or Java, which are really known for their like raw processing power, Python can be a little bit slower, mm. especially when it comes to tasks that require like lightning fast calculations. So for something like say high frequency trading where milliseconds can make or break a deal, Python maybe wouldn't be the best tool to use. Exactly. In scenarios where every microsecond counts, other languages might be a more appropriate choice. However, I do want to emphasize that Python speed is constantly being improved. And there are definitely ways to optimize your code to make it run faster. So it's all about like weighing the trade-offs and choosing the right tool for that specific job. Absolutely. Are there any other like potential downsides to be aware of? Yeah, one thing to consider is that, you know, because Python is designed to be so easy to use, it can sometimes lead to maybe slightly less efficient code, especially if developers aren't being careful. Okay. It's this classic trade-off, right? Readability and simplicity sometimes come at the expense of like raw processing power. So it's like the difference between like taking a scenic route versus taking the highway. The scenic route might be more enjoyable, but the highway will get you there faster, even if it's a little bit less uh, visually appealing. Exactly. But overall, it sounds like the like the pros of Python really do outweigh the cons in most cases. I would definitely agree with that. I mean, it's versatility, it's accessibility, and the sheer range of problems that it can solve really make it such a valuable tool in today's world. And speaking of today's world, uh, the YouTube video mentioned that Python skills are in really high demand among employers right now, which, you know, makes sense given everything we've been talking about. What's the job market really looking like for Python gurus these days? Let's just say that if you are looking for a career path that has like major growth potential, Python is definitely something to consider very seriously. The demand for skilled Python developers, it just continues to skyrocket, especially as more and more companies are embracing data science, automation, web development, all the things that we've been talking about. So learning Python, it's not just about like acquiring a cool new skill. It could actually lead to like a really rewarding and a, a very lucrative career. Absolutely. And the best part is, no. and the best part is it's actually easier than ever to learn. It's not just about like, you know, those expensive university courses or those intense coding boot camps anymore. Nope. Not at all. In fact, remember that amazing online community we talked about earlier? Yeah. Well, that community is like a gold mine of free resources for anyone who wants to learn Python. We're talking countless websites, online courses, interactive tutorials that can take you from like knowing absolutely nothing about coding to feeling pretty darn competent. That's incredibly encouraging. So even if someone is listening to this right now thinking like, OK, this all sounds amazing, but I don't have a tech background. I'm not a tech person. It's not too late to jump in and start, you know, exploring the world of Python. It is never too late. And you know what? Even if you don't necessarily see yourself becoming like a, a full time software developer, just having even like 
a basic understanding of PyCon can be a huge advantage in today's job market. It's like that saying, a little Python goes a long way. <laughs> exactly. Imagine like being able to automate tasks in your current job or being able to analyze data to help you make better decisions or even just like being able to understand the technology that's shaping the world around us. Those are such valuable skills across pretty much every profession these days. So it's almost like future-proofing your skill set regardless of what field you're in. 100%. As we start to wrap up this deep dive on Python, what would you say is like the key takeaway for our listener? If they only remember one thing from our conversation today, what should it be? I think if there's one thing to remember, it's that Python's popularity is not just hype. Okay. This is a language that has real staying power. And that all comes down to its versatility, mm -hmm. right? Its ability to streamline tasks, analyze data, build really innovative solutions. It's incredible. So whether you're someone who dreams of becoming, you know, a tech wizard, or if you just want to kind of dip your toes into the world of coding, Python offers so many possibilities. I love how you put that. It's not just about the code itself. It's about what you can do with it. Exactly. The problems you can solve, the things that you can create. It's really incredible. And as a final thought for our listeners, you know, we've talked about how Python is being used in all these diverse fields, everything from science and finance to even art. So what if you were to apply, you know, even just a little bit of that Python power to your own life, to your own interests? What could you automate? What could you analyze? What could you build? The possibilities really are endless. Absolutely. And the best part is it's easier than ever to learn. It's not just about, you know, those expensive university courses or those intense coding boot camps anymore, right? Nope, not at all. In uh -huh. fact, remember that amazing online community we talked about earlier? Yeah. Well, that community is like a gold mine of free resources for anyone who wants to learn Python. We're talking countless websites, online courses, interactive tutorials that can take you from knowing absolutely nothing about coding to feeling pretty darn competent. 100%. So even if someone is listening to this right now thinking like, okay, this all sounds amazing, but I don't have a tech background. I'm not a tech person. Yeah. It's not too late to jump in and start, you know, exploring the world of Python. It is never too late. Hmm. And you know what? Even if you don't necessarily see yourself becoming like a full-time software developer, just having even like a basic understanding of Python can be a huge advantage in today's job market. It's like that saying, a little Python goes a long way. Exactly. Imagine like being able to automate tasks in your current job or being able to analyze data to help you make better decisions, or even just like being able to understand the technology that's shaping the world around us. Those are such valuable skills across pretty much every profession these days. So it's almost like future proofing your skill set, regardless of what field you're in. A hundred percent. As we start to wrap up this deep dive on Python, yeah. what would you say is like the key takeaway for our listener? If they only remember one thing from our conversation today, what should it be? I think if there's one thing to remember, it's that Python's popularity is not just hype. This is a language that has real staying power. And that all comes down to its versatility, right? Its ability to streamline tasks, analyze data, build really innovative solutions. It's incredible. So whether you're someone who dreams of becoming, you know, a tech wizard, or if you just want to kind of dip your toes into the world of coding, Python offers so many possibilities. I love how you put that. It's not just about the code itself. It's about what you can do with it, you just, the oh. problems you can solve, the things that you can create. It's really incredible. And as a final thought for our listeners, you know, we've talked about how Python is being used in all these diverse fields, everything from science and finance to even art. So what if you were to apply, you know, even just a little bit of that Python power to your own life, to your own interests? What could you automate? What could you analyze? What could you build? The possibilities really are endless. 